Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Hobo here today, and in this video we're going to be giving you a full analysis of the 2016 WWE Draft starting from the first pick to the commentary team. So I guess we should get this thing started by saying that this really let me down last night on SmackDown Live, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. I can't change it. Uh, I slept on it. I still don't like it, but here we go. So we're just going to go by the rounds, and then I'll give you a breakdown of the rounds uh, based on how WWE set this up. There is three picks for Raw and two picks for SmackDown in each round. So the first round, Seth Rollins goes number one overall to Raw. Dean Ambrose goes number two overall to SmackDown. Charlotte to Raw. AJ Styles to SmackDown. And then the NXT call-up, Finn Balor to Raw. So that's quite an interesting first round you have there. Um, in my opinion, Raw drafted better than SmackDown here in the first round. And get used to me saying that because Raw has a lot, a lot better talent on their roster than SmackDown does. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, you got Seth Rollins going number one overall. And he's not even the champion. Uh, sure, in storyline, they expected him to beat Dean Ambrose to win the title later that night. But... You can't give me that excuse to not draft the WWE Champion. But also, then you could say that uh, Stephanie doesn't like Dean Ambrose. But that's still not an excuse not to draft the WWE Champion. But they made up for it, and they drafted the Women's Champion. And they drafted Finn Balor from NXT. Um, where would he have gone if Raw doesn't take him third? Based on SmackDown's picking, they probably would have never even thought of it. But on the SmackDown side, they do get the WWE Champion, and they do get AJ Styles. And that's interesting um, to see if AJ and the club stay together, but we'll find that out later in the draft. So the second round rolls around, and Raw starts this off, of course, picking Roman Reigns. And then John Cena goes to SmackDown, Brock Lesnar goes to Raw, Randy Orton to SmackDown, and the New Day to Raw. Clearly, again... In my opinion, anyway, I think that Raw got the better deal out of this round of the draft. Sure, you could say that Randy Orton and John Cena are the two biggest stars of, well, my generation, really. But uh, Roman Reigns is going to be the future guy, no matter who says anything about it. Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. I, you can't make an, an argument against drafting Brock Lesnar in that case. And then the New Day, the current tag team champions. So already, Raw's got two titles to SmackDown's one. Albeit SmackDown's one championship is a lot better and bigger than the two Raw titles. So then in the third round, of course Raw starts it off again, and they pick Sami Zayn, followed by the Bray Wyatt pick to SmackDown, then Sasha Banks to Raw, Becky Lynch to SmackDown, and then to close out the third round, Raw drafts Chris Jericho. So again, Raw got the better end of the deal. Becky Lynch and Bray Wyatt versus Sami Zayn, Sasha Banks, and Chris Jericho? You cannot tell me that SmackDown has a better third round than Raw's third round. It doesn't make any sense to me. There's so many people left on the board that SmackDown could have drafted. Even in the second round, uh, you, you don't need John Cena and Randy Orton since this is a new era, quote-unquote, and Shane and Daniel Bryan are supposed to be the heralds of this new era, but they went out and drafted John Cena and Randy Orton. What is the thought process behind that? I don't know. And it upsets me on a real emotional level that the drafting for SmackDown was so stupid. But whatever, I can't change that. So let's just go into the fourth round. Started off again by Raw, who picks Rusev, who gets Lana in that pick. Then the SmackDown brand drafts Mar or Miz with Maurice. Not Maurice with the Miz. but <laughs> And then Kevin Owens to Raw. Baron Corbin to SmackDown, and Enzo and Cass to Raw. I'm just going to keep saying it. Raw got the better end of the deal, and you can't tell me otherwise. Raw gets the United States champion and the former Intercontinental champion and future tag team champions, while SmackDown gets the current Intercontinental champion and Baron Corbin. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But this fifth round is where things get a bit interesting. A little bit, you know, whatever. <laughs> but 
But uh, the fifth round is started off by Gallows and Anderson going to Raw. So the club split up, but you have Finn Balor and uh, Gallows and Anderson on the same brand. So you can just have the, the Balor club right there on Raw if you wanted to, which is probably what's going to happen. And then SmackDown answers the Gallo and Anderson pick by picking American Alpha. Thank everyone. The first intelligent pick of this draft on the SmackDown side is American Alpha. And I'm so beyond excited to see what Chad Gable and Jason Jordan can do on the main roster. The only thing that saddens me is the New Day is, I guess, exclusive to Raw. So what are they going to do about tag team titles? Maybe the New Day can go uh, back and forth from each brand. And I hope that's the way it is because I don't want to see American Alpha not get those tag team titles, you know sooner rather than later and then smackdown uses their last pick in the fifth round to get dolph ziggler um not a pick that i care about i really don't like dolph ziggler so in that respect i guess you'd have to give raw the edge again in that round even though my personal bias goes to american alpha and i think that that's what's going to elevate smackdown to have the better round in my opinion even though the dolph ziggler pick is kind of a throwaway however i did miss the last two raw picks for the fifth round, that would be Big Show in the NXT call-up, Nia Jax. So yes, Raw with the better round again. But we have a sixth round that we need to talk about, and it starts off with Neville being picked by Raw, Natalia drafting SmackDown, you know what I mean, <laughs> Cesaro getting drafted to Raw, and Del Rio getting drafted to SmackDown, then Sheamus getting drafted to Raw. So again, uh, this is the end of the televised picks that were shown on SmackDown Live before the main event which don't even get me started on that. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to get into a rant. But Raw has the better roster overall now. And that's only the end of the televised picks. There's still uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I think, uh, yeah, there's 11 total rounds in this draft. So we're just going to have to wait and see where it goes from there. But I do like the Neville and Cesaro and Sheamus picks. They're all really solid guys. And I can't believe they fell to the sixth round, especially Cesaro. That one makes me angry. But the WWE Network picks start with the 7th round. The Golden Truth to Raw. Usto is to SmackDown. Titus O'Neil to Raw. Kane to SmackDown. And Paige to Raw. Again, Raw drafted a lot better in this round. Come on. <laughs> They're just killing SmackDown with this terrible, terrible, terrible drafting. 8th round kicks off with Darren Young to Raw. Kalisto to SmackDown. Sin Cara to Raw. A returning Naomi to SmackDown, Jack Swagger to Raw, and the Ascension to SmackDown. Again, how many times do I have to say this? I guess I have to say it 11 times <laughs> because it's true. Raw drafted better in this round. But you know what? It's just annoying. It really annoys me that they kind of killed SmackDown. But we have a ninth round to go and discuss. So the Dudleys to Raw, Zack Ryder to SmackDown. Summer Rae to Raw, Apollo Crews to SmackDown, Mark Henry to Raw, and the NXT call-up, Alexa Bliss to SmackDown. And for the first time in the entire draft, SmackDown has drafted a better round, and it only took them until the ninth round not even on SmackDown Live. It was on the WWE Network. They picked up Apollo Crews and Alexa Bliss, and that, that just pretty much launches this round into a big ol' win category for SmackDown. But um, 10th round kicks off, and Braun Strowman goes to Raw, Brizongo to SmackDown, Bo Dallas alone to Raw, uh, Eva Marie to SmackDown, uh, The Shining Stars to Raw, and The Vaude Villains to SmackDown. And that ends round number 10. And then the 11th and final round kicks off with Alicia Fox to Raw, Eric Rowan to SmackDown, Dana Brooke to Raw, Mojo Rawley from NXT to SmackDown, Curtis Axel to Raw, and Carmella from NXT to SmackDown. So they split up Carmella and Enzo and Cass, but uh, whatever. I think they still have Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder on the same brand. They do. I just went and checked. <laughs> they do have Mojo and Zack on the same brand, so you can have them as another tag team up there. But also another interesting development is the WWE commentary teams have changed through uh, the new era. Not exactly through the draft, but uh, 
The Raw commentary team will now be Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxton. Corey Graves is on Raw. <laughs> Corey Graves is on Raw. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. And then on SmackDown, of course, we have Maro Ranallo with JBL and David Otunga in Raw as the better commentary team. <laughs> they they couldn't they couldn't even give SmackDown a better commentary team. If Corey Graves went to SmackDown, then that would make SmackDown better. Corey Graves is on Raw. That makes Raw better. Uh, I might be slightly biased there. But, yeah, I kind of like Corey Graves. Um, and that's it. That's it for the 2016 WWE Draft. I give my or I, I gave my thoughts about each round as they kind of ended. Uh, yeah, Raw drafted a much better draft. And they kind of gave SmackDown the short end of the stick. And, yeah... I, I can't be the only one who's heard in the build-up to the draft that they wanted to make SmackDown either equal or better than Raw in order to, um, like, challenge it in the ratings or whatever they wanted to do, or whatever USA wanted to do. But, yeah, they just, they killed SmackDown in this draft. They literally, they destroyed them. They gave them such little in this draft, and Raw's got such a rich... The amount of talent, and we all know everybody who's on Raw, and some of the casual fans might not know who everybody is on SmackDown. But then again, are the casual fans watching SmackDown? Is the question. They're both on USA. They both start at eight o'clock, and it, they're only on Monday and Tuesday. So does the casual fan just do, do they watch both shows? I don't know. That's interesting, but. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I am quite pissed off at the way that this draft ended with SmackDown looking like a chump and Raw, of course, being the superior brand. I guess like it should be? I don't know. Where's Triple H with his shovel when you need it? Because goddamn Stephanie and Mick Foley put the damn shovel right in SmackDown Live. It's over for SmackDown Live. Oh, right. Whenever you say SmackDown Live, you have to say live because SmackDown Live. I don't know. That's another thing that pisses me off. <laughs> like the the analysis after the end or on the WWE Network live who cares I don't I know it's live I'm watching it you dummy don't have to tell me that it's live jeepers all right whatever that's it for my rant uh leave your guys' thoughts about the draft in the comment section below if you're as angry that SmackDown got destroyed as I am let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to agree with you also drop a like on this video uh, if you think that Raw is overpowered, drop a like on this video. If you think SmackDown got destroyed, and leave a like on this video. If you enjoy the WWE, boom, there we go. And also, please make sure to subscribe because that's the number uno way to help the channel. And uh, we're at 2,006 now, subscribers. We're trying to get up there. And the only way to get there is through your subscriptions. And they all mean so much to me. So yeah, that's going to do it for your boy Hobo. And I will catch you guys in the next video.